In today's video, we've got huge news out of Adobe from their Max conference in London. They are making big changes to the way that they're incorporating AI into their products. We've also got updates to Lightroom, Photoshop, Premiere, and a bunch more, which is important because we're also gonna talk about huge changes that are coming from their competitors like Instagram and Canva. This might be Adobe's biggest move in really in years since they've been incorporating AI into their products. For the first time, Adobe is gonna be opening up its creative cloud ecosystem to third-party AI generators. So for years, they've been sticking with their Firefly model, but Adobe has now confirmed that they are gonna be bringing in popular non-Adobe AI models, and they're gonna incorporate them directly into Photoshop and Premiere. So what's first? The initial rollout is going to allow users to access Google's Imagen 3, VO2 for video, OpenAI's ChatGPT image generator, previously DALI and now just, I think, part of the new 4041 rollout, as well as Black Forest Labs Flux 1.1 inside of the standalone Firefly app. So if you're using the Firefly app by itself, you'll be able to access those models initially, which is a good first step and then they'll start rolling out more integration down the line. They've also confirmed that they're working with other AI companies like Runway, Pika, Luma, Ideogram. So expect more in the coming months. I think this is just the first slate. Each of these models has its own kind of look and feel and strength. And that comes down to both the technology and the training data. They're also adding that all of their AI generated assets will come tagged with content credentials. But this doesn't indicate like a, they're not waving the white flag over to Adobe when it comes to the Firefly models. The announcement also includes the fact that they are debuting Firefly Model 4 Ultra, which can do still images at up to 2K. They're also improving the speed, the realism, and the granular control. So Adobe here is not only doubling down on its own products, but also opening it up to others because they know what they're good at and what they're not. I may be doing some videos in the future, testing some of these models out, so stay subscribed for that. And I'd be very curious to see, and let me know down in the comments if there's a specific model or tool that you're using that you didn't hear mentioned. So related to Adobe's announcement about Firefly, we're hearing that OpenAI is gonna be doing integration with Adobe and others to provide image generation and more for products like Express, but also Canva and Figma. And they're gonna be adding features like prompt following, fine style selection, and world knowledge. ChatGPT launched their updated image generation system last month, and in the first week, users generated 700 million images. So people are into it. And with their API, OpenAI is effectively asking app developers to just bake their model directly in using the API to be able to generate professional images inside their platforms if that's not something that they want to build internally. And pricing is pretty simple. Uh, two cents, seven cents, and 19 cents, depending on the quality level that you want out of your generated image. Figma just rolled out the GPT Image 1 capabilities for designers to be able to conjure, edit, and iterate on visuals within their designs. You can also prompt the tool to add, remove, or modify objects, move backgrounds, make a canvas larger. You've also got folks like Canva, but also GoDaddy and HubSpot looking to integrate this for marketing visuals. Now, ChatGPT claims that they're gonna be incorporating C2PA metadata for content tracking to keep this kosher. I can tell you I've used this inside of Canva and it's okay. For what I was doing, it was okay. If you have used these tools or if you're planning on using these tools or if you hate this idea, let me know down in the comments. So I've talked about Firefly and some of the other competitors that Adobe is incorporating into its products. Uh, and those are mostly revolving around image generation. But Adobe isn't just focused on image generation, they're expanding their lineup to include text to video, text to vector, and a new product that they're trying in public beta right now called Firefly Boards. So a new trend that I've been seeing a lot of, especially since this ChatGPT update came out, is the idea of mood boarding creating a collaborative pin board, something like what Firefly uh, boards or Fig Jam offer so that you can kind of quickly visualize, refine, and come up with a visual style. As a photographer, this is super helpful. So that's in beta right now. I'm definitely gonna take that for a spin, and so stay subscribed for that update video. 
We're also getting updates to our core apps like Photoshop with more AI enhancements like selecting details in the object selection tool so that you can isolate specific features like hair, uh, fabrics, and then adjustments related to those selections are now a little easier to use for things like color adjustments. And so it's just a little bit more intuitive when you're using those controls. And near and dear to my heart, Lightroom has gotten a big update for landscape photographers, the ability to do landscape masking. So if you've used masking in Lightroom before, you know that you could select a person and it would identify different components of that person, like their skin or their eyes or their mouth or their teeth, that sort of thing. Super helpful as a portrait photographer, I use that quite a bit. But now they're basically rolling that out for landscape photography. So if you think about the things that would be the skin and the hair and the teeth and the mouth of the landscape, like trees and mountains and lakes and sky and clouds. And those are now something that Lightroom can identify and create discrete masks for. Additionally, those smart masks are now available both in Photoshop, Lightroom, Lightroom Classic, and Adobe Camera Raw. And between Lightroom and Photoshop, you can actually transfer them. This is another feature that I plan on testing out. That'll be a feature that I'm definitely going to that's an update that I'm gonna highlight in an upcoming video where I'm going to talk about the updates to Lightroom 8.3, Lightroom Classic 14.3, and Photoshop 26.6. But here's the theme. Adobe wants to be the platform that you choose for professional commercial work, knowing that there are other tools that are able to generate imagery or do some of this stuff, but they don't have the power that some of the tools inside their apps have, at least not yet. Another enhancement that Adobe has been talking about at Adobe Max in London is trying to make sure that creators are given credit, even when their work gets remixed or reposted. And so their content authenticity web app, which is now available in public beta, helps creators embed invisible tamper-resistant metadata into images. That way claims of authorship can be robust and even if your work gets just screenshotted and shared, which obviously strips it of all of its metadata, it would still retain this additional information. And lets you include things like your website, your social links. It even lets you include your editing history. It integrates with Behance, and you can also use LinkedIn to identify or, or to authenticate your identity. Now, it's not perfect. There's the possibility that some image hosting services might wipe that data. Some of that credential information might get lost. But Adobe has a Chrome extension that will inspect and recover and display what survives. It'll also show you what generative AI was used in the creation. You can also now apply a do not train AI tag directly into your images to signal models that you don't want your creation, your content to be used to train machine learning tools. Now there's no guarantee, and Adobe admits this, there's no guarantee that providers will actually follow this request, that they'll honor you, uh, they might not care, but it's a good start. It's also not just for pros, this is a free public beta. You just need to have a free Adobe account and the Chrome extension works on really pulling credentials out of any content that you find online. Next, let's talk about competition for Adobe because Canva isn't standing still. They've got their new Visual Suite 2.0 and it's kind of positioning itself as an all-in-one AI powered creative platform. This is both for individuals and for teams and it was unveiled at their recent global event Canva outlined some aggressive new features. They're aiming to close the productivity gap for casual and professional content creators. Their big headline is One Design, which lets users create everything from documents, presentations, websites in a single unified file format. So there's no toggling between separate apps, trying to eliminate dealing with compatibility headaches. There's also been a strong push into data visualization with Canva Sheets and Magic Charts, trying to turn spreadsheets and raw data into impactful designs with animated infographics and more. And as someone who has spent quite a bit of time, more than I like to admit, in Power BI, that is appreciated. So Magic Studio going kind of at scale is pretty noteworthy. They're promising rapid creation of personalized branded content from massive data sets. So think marketing that adjusts on the fly and sales collateral that is instantly personalized for each contact. So not just in the design side, but also in pricing, availability, timelines, that sort of thing. They've also added voice activated Canva AI. So no matter your skill level, you can just tell Canva what you wanna build. And I would wanna mention their code tool, uh, which is bringing interactive content 
for non-coders with a prompt. So basically Canva is doing vibe coding. Their photo editor is adding advanced AI-based editing, background replacement, precision object removal. I mean, they're really going at everything that Adobe does and they're pushing data privacy as a core component and selling point. And for enterprise clients, they're offering legal assurances uh, and indemnity uh, in the case that you get sued for a copyright claim. Now, according to Canva, there have been 35 billion designs since they rolled out in 2013. Millions are created each day, and I think their level of ambition is pretty clear here. So hopefully this market competition pushes folks like Adobe to do more and to continue to iterate and keep prices under control. So finally, on the competitive front, Meta has launched their new Instagram edit app, not just to compete with Adobe, but to compete with CapCut as well. Now this was announced a while ago and delayed and it has finally hit the app store. And while TikTok is still kind of, I, I don't know, in limbo, I don't know what we would call it, Meta is really excited to kind of jump into this, into the short form side of editing and to help users create like CapCut does for TikTok. And so Edits is offering a suite of features targeted to content creators and influencers. It's free, unlike CapCut. I'm gonna do a whole rundown video on this product. I, I really wanna try it out and show you my experience so you can see whether or not it's something you actually wanna use. But again, from the side of market competition, I really wish that Premiere Rush was better. I wish that Adobe Express was better. And I wish that Apple would make iMovie edit vertical video. What are you doing, Apple? Edits also includes project management analytics, dashboards, helps you keep track of ideas. So it's definitely a clear shot at TikTok and CapCut, but definitely something that folks over at Apple and Adobe should be looking closely at. Let me know down in the comments if this caught your attention and if you're planning to give it a try or if you have already and what you think. Are you steeped in the CapCut world or are you like me and just trying to do everything with Final Cut? But I'll try to keep an eye on all these competitive shifts as things change and make videos to keep you posted as that happens. If that's the kind of thing that you're into, go ahead and hit the subscribe button so you can see those videos when they come out. You can find me on all those platforms, uh, my Instagram, TikTok, all that stuff down below. Comment if there's something specific that you'd like to see me review or play with and show you and stay subscribed so you can see those videos when they come out. And again, thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.